Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to go to the press and see what the headlines on some of our national dailies are. We're being joined this morning by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, who is a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Okay, we're beginning this uh, morning's paper review with uh, the Business NG. The Business NG... Um, uh, leads with shareholders' windfall. Banks pay out 379 billion naira as dividends. Uh, so uh, we're just wondering, amid the economic hardship and all that, uh, the banks are making cool cash and paying dividends of, to that tune. So let's just take your, your take on what is happening. The banking sector seems to be one of the few uh, sectors that are really flourishing. What? That is one of the parameters of the Nigerian nation. Our economy is very, very difficult to understand and interpret. And some other kind, what is happening to us, if it's happening over there, you will find out that the banks will find it very, very difficult to make a profit. But here, inflation is rising. The banks are borrowing heavily from the CGM, from the central bank to be able to meet their technical uh, education. There are no serious economic activities that is uh, going on anywhere in Nigeria in the last uh, one of this next uh, year or so to say. Yes, the banks are declaring profit and they're uh, giving happy dividends to their shareholders. We will begin to wonder where these dividends or these profits uh, out of which they are going to be paying dividends are coming from. My take is that um, we don't really have a bank in Nigeria. What we have uh, are money lenders who uh, get money, mostly from uh, politicians and uh, some other characters. And then they will have this um, the money in, the, in their banks, after which they give a little to people who really want to teach a new uh, uh, business. So, until we begin to do serious banking in Nigeria, in which you and I will come up with a business proposal, walk to our bank, or the bank, or a bank in which we have an account, submit the business plans or proposals to them, and then they will accept our business plan or proposal on its own merit. And based on that, they will be ready to make facilities available for to all for such businesses to to take off. By the time we begin to do that, we will begin to do serious banking in Nigeria. The present situation in which uh, the bankers and college politicians and the illicit uh, businessmen to go into some of these public places to steal money and come and warehouse it in their banks. And then support all manner from the various activities going on within the economy. Uh, I speak volumes about the funny character of the Nigerian banks and the way and manner in which business operations in Nigeria defies all logics, defies different logics, defies uh, as well as public uh, economic logic uh, all over the world. It is funny. Also a headline there in Business uh, NG, stock market loses 3.57 trillion naira in April as CBN policies take toll. We're seeing the uh, banks flourishing, we're seeing stock market losing uh, 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 stock, so <laughs> I don't know. That's very interesting too. We need a between what is happening in the stock market mm. and the profits that the banks are paying to their shareholders. Why do I say this? If the stock market is not doing well, it will affect the share value of those banks. Mm. And when your share value is depreciating, those are not time to want to begin to pay empty dividends uh, to, 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 to the shareholders. Even if you make profit, you probably want to keep those profits to be able to show up mm. your capital base, to pick up your capital base, and also to be able to repay. Some of the rules loans the, the banks are going to be taken from the CBN to be able to meet the obligations to, to, to their customers. 
So honestly speaking, our bank system, our banking system, is like a political system. They defy logic. Hmm. <laughs> well, Nigeria must survive. I just remember that from uh, from the musician of d those days. Okay, let's take these two headlines together. Is this still on uh, the business NG? Uh, first of all, fuel scarcity. NNPC assures normalcy by Wednesday. That's today. Uh, blames logistic for logistics for disruption. And also here we have 200 billion naira debt. Ipman threatens to cut off fuel supply. Motorist commuters groan as petrol prices hits 1,000 naira per liter. In some places we're hearing it's 1,200 naira per liter, and this is not black market. So uh, I don't know. We're, <laughs> we're expecting normalcy today. On the other uh, hand, Ip Man is threatening to go on strike. And you know, you know, last week I was talking about propaganda and the need for there to be some uh, truthfulness mm. in which the people in authority relate to the Nigerian people. When you begin to use propaganda, to rule and such propaganda sooner than later it will happen collapses then you are going to be having very very messy situations in your hand before now they came up with a theory that uh, ah, Dangote refinery has begun to work now Dangote has reduced um, uh, the unit cost of the petroleum products Dangote is going to flood the market with petroleum products Another refinery is about to begin operation. The Potakwan refinery, the application has, uh, has uh, been completed. In one or two, it will go on stream and begin to supply the market and what are they? Now, all those things are no longer forthcoming. Look at what the petroleum marketers are saying. They are saying they are being hold billions of naira or was it millions of naira of money they ought to have been paid, which they have not uh, have been paid. And... Uh, Incidentally, too, I happened to have traveled this last weekend. I was in Oyo, Ondo, and Warabe. And the sorry situation with the fuel, as, uh, I mean, they say the collapse of the fuel supply system, the, 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 the punishment, the hardship, it is important on those two, on those three or three states or there about that I've mentioned. It, uh, you can't. Just talk about it. Uh, it's unbelievable. I had to check so many to so many places, long distances, because vehicles are not available, and vehicles are not available because there was no source of life. The streets were deserted. People couldn't come out to do their businesses and all that. And you know that also has very serious implications on the economy when shops and businesses are shut because people cannot easily commit to their respective uh, uh, business uh, places and all that. The truth of the matter is that uh, there is a kind of trust deficit between the leaders and the mayors. Those who are leading us are not honest with us. They are not telling us the truth. Because initially what we are told is that uh, immediately they will the first of citizens. Then we will have a stable first supply regime. And this will be back to normal after some time and all that. But that seems, seems not to be happening. Uh, that seems not to be happening. And because of that, they have to come up with all manner of uh, uh, econometrics to explain the disaster situation in which the Nigerian economy is now uh, facing. For God's sake, where there are challenges, let us be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nigerian people are rational people. They are one of the most tolerant people you can find anywhere in the world. If they were not tolerant, they wouldn't have been taking all this uh, shit from the, 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 the politicians. Since 1999. The tragedy is we need to be honest with ourselves. And this government is making very, very serious mistakes that I'm, I, I'm, I'm shocked. Nobody is honest enough to begin to tell them. Let me give one or two of those examples. They have awarded a contract now for construction of some rules worth trillions of naira. Mm. And my take is that uh, in period of inflation, when inflation is this high, about 33%, this is not when you begin to expand the public sector spending. Rather, you begin to mop up money so as to bring down inflation. 
Just you are, you are mopping up money from the bank, in which you are unable to meet their basic obligations to the people. You are clamping down on the finance houses, on forest guru, uh, forest uh, uh, sellers all over the place and all that. Then you also have to curtail public spending, so as to be able to, 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 to bring down inflation and concentrate on more critical areas of the economy. But they are not doing that. They say they have awarded the contract of $15 billion for the coastal road. Another road between Sokoto and Lagos also going to award a trillion of Naira. Mm. They are going to, to, to award that too. And then housing projects uh, all over the place and other. These are massive, massive uh, uh, spending in public uh, 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 area, which ordinarily shouldn't be in a critical time like this. What they should do is to concentrate on maintaining existing infrastructure and then tackling the challenges of security and tackling the challenges of uh, food security and making sure that the security men, the police, the army and all that, their welfare and their salary and allowance are well paid so that they're able to discharge their responsibility to the Nigerian people. And then you also tackle the, the challenges that we are having in the area of electricity supply. If you maintain infrastructure, you tackle electricity problems and all that, and you're able to put food on the average Nigerian people's table, the problem would have been asked, or they will hear you. Obama just did one thing for us, the GSM. And that is what everybody <coughs> will finally remember Obama and for. Before he came up with that program and all that, it was a chaotic situation in the tele telecommunication sector. You had less than uh, uh, 500,000 functioning uh, telephone lines in Nigeria before Obama was able to break that deep law. I would advise Mr. President, for God's sake, break the grid lock in the electricity sector. Break the grid lock in agriculture. Break the grid lock in, uh, in, in, in security. And by the time you are able to do that, he still will be very, very kind to him. All these lies about the uh, fuel uh, uh, logistics and what has we done, what will be the solution, what will be the solution. Uh, many refineries are springing up in the Niger Delta and all that. For God's sake, these are propaganda, which we sooner than later pomerang. Well, propaganda all the time, but one day, like you said, mm -hmm. we might just uh, face something else that we did not think about. Uh, exactly. Nigerians say, it is a carry us go where we know no. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the um, Minister of uh, Mineral Resources, uh, Nigeria's mineral deposit is worth 750 billion naira, says Alake. That's on the Nature newspaper. 750 yeah. billion dollars, uh, says Alake. So this is this is I, quite I, I a think, handsome amount. I think it could even be more than that. Mm. From the country I have read uh, somewhere, Nigeria is sitting on a gold mine with regards to mineral deposits. But unfortunately, the Nigerian airlines have refused to allow the government to organize that sector, to structure it and formalize it. Rather, they are encouraging what we call artisanal uh, mining, in which they recruit young men and bring people from abroad, arm them with AK-47 and grenades, and deploy them to the communities in which uh, minerals are deposited, drive away the local communities, and begin to extract those mineral resources, selling them in the black market, and pocketing millions of dollars on a daily basis. What Mr. Lake required to do, work with Mr. Payer and Security Agency, to formalize that sector. Let's formalize the mining sector like it's done in South Africa, like it's done in Egypt and some of these other countries who rely really in, uh, on the mineral uh, the deposits. Take, for example, uranium, uranium which is used um, in the nuclear energy area. That is a gold mine. There are also the same number, so many of gold and what have you, in Sanfala, in, in Niger State, and some of these other states, which the airlines, which individuals, airlines, uh, just mining and pocketing the resources, without paying any uh, royalty or any tax or anything to the government. So, if we have been able to formalize what is happening in the South South, in the Niger Delta, within the oil resources, I mean, with our oil resources, why has it not become impossible to formalize what we do have in the area of, uh, of a mineral deposits and mine, honestly speaking, 
what is happening in that area is the uh, anarchy. And somebody, the Mr. President, would have to put his foot on the ground and stamp out and stamp out the anarchy in that um, in that uh, sector. But Again, I, I, to, I, I, there is something we require to do, which we as a nation have not done. We have not been able to do what I would call a, a kind of geological mapping of the mineral, a comprehensive geological mapping of the mineral deposits we have in the different parts of the country, how much they are worth. What Mr. Lackey has just said is a rough estimate, which doesn't speak to true statistics or serious geological survey all over the place. Look at the nature there, they have gold in there, which is also being mined by the TLI and the Chinese people, and the different parts of the country. You need to do a geological mapping, have concrete estimates, and this is not too difficult. The science is there now, the machineries are there, the experts are there to be able to do this. But you and I will know that our allies will not be ready for these things to be done. But when you do it, you snatch it make from their mouth. You snatch it their feeding bottle from their mouth. They would rather want to keep the mineral sector in the, in the chaotic uh, state and such a need to keep for their own private benefits. Yeah, well, uh, maybe, maybe in a bit to uh, address this, this is why we have this next uh, headline here. Nigerian government trains 2,000 special marshals to combat illegal mining. Is this enough? I, I don't think so. The illegal, the artisanal miners, backed by their foreign expatriates and their local uh, uh, potentates, are very, very powerful people. You need to do more than that to be able to rein them in, to be able to put uh, some uh, discipline into that uh, area. Uh, honestly, in, I read, uh, I think uh, in the beginning of the year, Mr. President said they are going to be a part of the security uh, unit that will take care of the forest area, the coast area, and all that. Maybe we need to also establish. Uh, a kind of security apparatus who would uh, take responsibility for instilling order and discipline and ensuring that that sector is formalized, like uh, the petroleum sector has been formalized since about 1959. Uh, the amount of money they are talking about will not be able to fight those foreign uh, invaders who are well harmed who have uh, normal resources in terms of money and foreign backers, even from their own home government, to begin to impose the kind of chaos they have imposed on us within the mineral resources uh, sector. So it is a good beginning for the first At least Mr. Lake is uh, has been speaking, is uh, been uh, telling us the proposals they have to ensure that things are properly done in that area. That is the beginning. We have never had um, a minister who, is in that, who has shown such uh, concern with regards to the portfolio of his office, like the man has been showing. So if we get the necessary backing from the presidency, from the respective state governors, where these minerals um, have been found, and of course, too, from the hierarchy, of Nigerian security forces, then we might be able to receive some discipline. And Nigeria may be begin to receive some dividends with regard to its mineral uh, resources. If we are insisting that the Niger Delta people to continue to allow that area, the petroleum area, to, to remain from alive and to allow the federal government continue to have unfettered access to the petroleum resources, then we must also say that and insist on that with regards to where gold may be found in this country, with regards to where uranium may be found in this country, with regards to where some other solid minerals may be found in this country, what is good for the good should equally be good for the ganda. Okay. Um We'll, 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 we'll continue with uh, um, Nature News and take a, a final headline from here. 
Professor Utsev urges World Bank to commit more funds to power irrigation projects in Nigeria. Much as I like the idea, uh, my question is, if the World Bank is coming to support, it should be a support, is our own government doing anything that will encourage that kind of support coming from the external uh, body, which is the World Bank? Or are we just going to uh, keep accepting help, you know, handouts from all other uh, countries and organizations, and then we do nothing? Do you think anything has been done in that uh, sector, in that regard, that will make the World Bank, or will give the World Bank the encouragement to come support us and uh, send more funds to Nigeria for the power irrigation projects? Well, um, when you take money from the Federal from the World Bank, one way or the other, that is a loan. And if a country are complaining that you already have a, a jumbo, jumbo loan, both domestic and foreign, on your head, then you will not be approaching some of these international agencies again for more loans. Because by the time you begin to file all these loans again, like it is happening now, in which almost 90% or 99.9% of your earnings is not being used to file this loan, then taking the kind of loan they said they will be taking for education, a mumble opinion is not the right way to go. But even more importantly, we collect that between 1979 and I think 1983 or thereabouts, under the Shehu Shagari regime, and before Shehu Shagari, under the Obasanjo regime, as the military head of state, there are all sorts of river basin authorities that are established all over the country. Obumoshu River Basin Authority, Kineko River Basin Authority, they were all over the country. Those agencies were established to be able to tackle issues of irrigation, preparation of land for farmers to be able to fill the soil and plant and feed the nation, engage in fisheries and what have you. But what happened during uh, the Sagari regime, politicians were deployed as board members, as chairmen of most of those uh, water basin authorities. And you know politicians are like locals. Wherever they go, they leave famine, sorrow, tears, and blood. By the time that government of Saint Jagari was overthrown, all the river basin authorities were as good as dead. And all efforts to revive them ever since then has never been successful. We are about to leave. You will allow those river basin authorities to and we continue to form them. There wouldn't be now, <laughs> in year 2024, they're going to the World Bank to borrow the titans. They say they want to borrow for the purpose of financing education in Nigeria. Furthermore, I don't know whether you have gone to some of these um, irrigation sites in the past. Mm. You find out that uh, the technology for doing irrigation is a very, very simple one. You need pipes, you need sprinklers, you need pumps to pump the water and water out. And of course, maybe an artificial lake or dam or a river from where to take the, the, the water. Are those things that we cannot do in Nigeria, that we have to start running to the World Bank to go and borrow money and next put in a factory to come and do that for us? Because the World Bank will not give you the money without sending an expert to follow you to come and supervise and consult or even supply most of the equipment. And by the time they say they have borrowed the money, they have technically repatriated the money back mm -hmm. to one technical assistant or the other. That they will say they are giving you. So again, too, look at all the research institutes. NIHOS, IITA, Civil uh, Research in Badegi, all manners of research institutes, agricultural research institutes, uh, all over the country, and all that. Okay? Why don't we find ways to resuscitate all those research institutes? Because they are the ones who are supposed to be advising us and coming up with technology for some of these uh, projects that the federal government and the state government say they want to do. Honestly speaking, I don't think it should be done. And 
to borrow money to finance an education project in the 21st century. Okay, uh, today is uh, Workers' Day. Um, Labour laments rising food prices, fuel crisis. Uh, that's uh, the major headline on the Punch newspaper uh, right now. Uh, but there's another headline on the top right corner of the front page of the Punch newspaper. Federal government raises salaries of military police orders. We saw that these salaries that were being raised were raised to like 20%, 25% or 30% as the case may be. Uh, that means that this new minimum wage in this salary structure that we're seeing is about 47,000 uh, Naira from the 30,000 Naira that we've been seeing. It's, in fact, it's about 47,250 Naira per month. That's the new minimum wage if we go by the percentage by which this, new, this uh, uh, wage has been moved. The salaries that we are talking about now, 20% and all that, so of 30%, what will you get? So you get something like 47,000 uh, Naira per month, and that's what... The, so I don't know, I don't know what you think about it. On uh, Labor Day, on Workers' Day, we have had this announcement, and what do you feel about the raise, the increment in these uh, remaining... Uh, uh, salary structures that we've heard. Maybe the Guardian newspaper has a very beautiful story with regards to the history mm. of the salary increases in Nigeria. Yeah. The kind of which is to the salaries are increasing in Nigeria, the more important the Nigerian workers become. And now the average Nigerian people suffer from some of these uh, weight increases through inflation, depreciation, and then the inability of the different levels of government or tires of government to meet the obligation to pay the workers' uh, uh, salary and all that. So, and, uh, you know, like we said before this program, when you increase the workers' salary, what is the percentage of people who work with the government? These are these the millions of other people who don't work for government and are not expecting a salary increase. Because all the time salary have always increased. Even when the part of that, they organize by the sector who have up to 20, 30 workers who equally increase the salaries of the employees. The organized private sector have never followed suit. They've never honored it's not expected. They don't increase the salaries of their workers. Because the family don't have the means to do so. And where they have the means to do so, they are thinking about profit and the dividends they would like to pay to the shareholders and whatever. So, you and I, especially those who don't work for government, will be the poorer for it. And even those who work for government, when they get this salary increase and other, the inflation would have made a miss meet of whatever increases that they get. And when inflation doesn't make a miss meet of it and other, the different tires of government will not be able to pay because they will say they don't have the resources or the money to be able to meet that of The one that was increased before some years ago, and for today, so many state governments, so many local governments, have not been able to pay that salary. So when you now increase again, and Lord, I don't know where the money will be coming from. I would rather, uh, like I said earlier on, that uh, instead of all these uh, so-called increases in salary and all that, let us tackle the fundamental issues of where the issue is really putting the average Nigerian um, uh, people. Food is very expensive and costly in the market now, and they are not available. They are in security. The farmers cannot go to farms and produce food that the people will eat and know that. We spend too much money on politics and then organizing elections that they have to pay. Uh, it reflect the issues and the of the average so that should be the best talk of our development. It is neglected, it is suffered, and all that. So, if you look at the challenges in the housing sector, uh, provide the quality public schools at all levels, and then we now find a way to get the farmer to return back to the farm and water at the and of course, we maintain existing infrastructure. We don't begin to do banditry in the area of electricity. 
and all that. Then the Nigerian people will need a better policy. Like I said, this is not a time to start expanding public sector spending. When inflation is ravaging a society or a country, you don't begin to expand public sector spending. You are causing more harm to the economy than, you are, than the good you have intended to do, so to say. It's all right. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, well, we can only hope for the best. Uh, everything else uh, went up by 200, 300%. Tariff go went up by 300%. Uh, fuel went mm. up by thousands yeah. of percent and all that. But the salary was increased 20%. So we are going to have 20 to 35%. Well, that's where we are. That's the reality on ground. But we do hope that... Uh, um, things will get better. Yeah, the That's all I can say. The salary will come from. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, the federal government get the money. Well, the states, are, the states are still money. getting enough uh, allowance and all that, but we'll have to wrap up at this point. Are they going to start doing what Wadi was and Ned will be doing? They will print more money, don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kolaholi, thank you so much for being a part of our show this morning. Thanks for having me. Mm. You have a lovely day. You too. Happy Workers' Day to you. Thank you, thank you. We've been talking to Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. We were reviewing some of the headlines on our national dailies and we'll take a short uh, uh, time and then when we return we'll be looking at the first hot topic. Stay with us.